Welcome to the sauna project. Uh, my name is Sam Giroir. This is a project I've been long uh, thinking about and finally in uh, 2025 we've committed and made it happen. So it's been a long time in the making. First idea started back in 2022. I began with uh, sketching on, on AutoCAD just ideas and uh, preparing the drawings and multiple iterations to kind of bring the vision to life on the computer and essentially preparing the drawings for construction. I originally thought of the project uh, would only take a couple of weeks off of work and uh, a couple of weekends, but it ended up taking much longer than uh, I had anticipated. Finally, after approximately five months, the project is now uh, complete. So it took a lot of dedication, patience, and sacrifice of, uh, of the summer of 2025, basically committing all weekends and, and weeknights to the project. Since a young age, I had a passion for working with my hands. Woodworking, welding, and metal fabrication, concrete work are passions of mine. Those years of learning how to handle those materials allowed me to build a foundation and skills to take on a project of, of, of this scale. Over the years, I've accumulated a little bit of experience on a, on a smaller project woodworking, a little bit of experience on, on metal fabrication projects, miscellaneous metal fabrication projects, and and small concrete projects, and now uh, this project allowed me to bring it, it all together. So a senior log construction was a completely new territory uh, for me. It wasn't something that I had uh, worked with in the past. So the walls of the sauna are constructed with sun groove uh, cedar log. They're, they're fastened together with structural screws uh, along with sealant or caulking in between our, our joints in order to, uh, to seal the, um, the outside from the exterior because there's no uh, insulation or, or, or vapor barrier on, on our outside walls. It's just, it's a solid cedar construction. These particular logs have been a story on their own. They were milled about 15 years ago by a local uh, sawmill and they've stayed inside for about 15 years. So for the construction, they were well seasoned and uh, the moisture content was good to go uh, for the construction. So uh, cedar is a softwood, so uh, generally easy to uh, work with. The fresh smell of cedar is, is, is very difficult to beat, uh, so it's a, it's a fun product to, uh, to work with. But it's also naturally very curvy, so in a lot of cases I had to put a lot of, of fight and strength into, into putting these logs where I needed them to, to go and, and wrestle them in place essentially. So it's, it's wired off of, the, off of the house essentially and, uh, and from there it's, it's mostly conventional uh, wiring. The challenges with the wiring was more so in, in, in the, uh, running the wires through the logs. It's not your conventional um, two by six walls where you would run a wire uh, right through and if it's short you pull your wire back so I had to run the wires through each log as I went up with my with my rows of logs. So for the exterior I didn't really want to use a conventional stain as that fades over time and it didn't offer the black depth that I was uh, looking for so I've opted to use a, a burning procedure called Tsusangi Ban. So it's a traditional Japanese technique. The surface of the wood is, is charred with a torch. It's sealed with the linseed oil. That was quite the uh, nerve-wracking process to burn the almost completed sauna construction with a giant tiger torch and I was hosing the, uh, the burn uh, to control the depth of the burn because you, you don't want the burn to get into in between the logs and, and slowly, you know, slowly take the cabin uh, down essentially. So another challenge was uh, mixing and pouring the concrete uh, floor slab. So I've uh, used a conventional mixer. So uh, I had to mix my own batch and then as I was mixing a small batch, I would bring it into the sauna and systematically pour the, the slab, finish it at the same time. So that was quite the challenge as, as I had to trowel it and, and make sure I could still uh, work the concrete as it was kind of settling in. The door is a, is a one of door. It's my first time building a door, so I've, I've built the door from, from scratch. So I've milled the, uh, the lumber with a table saw and a, and a router table uh, in order to make a tongue and a groove into my members, and then I've, I've glued and clamped them all together. So following that, I had to burn the door for it to match the, the sauna susangi band. So 
that was quite the nerve-wracking process as I had spent a few days milling the lumber and then another day or so gluing it and, and sanding it and doing all my, my holes for my hardware. Um, then I, then came the time to, to burn the door. So um, as it's a very thin door, uh, it's much more susceptible to to warping. So the heat could create the door to just warp. So as I was burning the surface of the door, I kept a close eye on the plumbness of the door and I also burnt it sequentially. So it really controlled the burn in order to essentially control the warping of the door and not have it or not having to start it back from scratch. So a last little challenge I, I'd like to underline is the uh, the roof membrane. So again, that's uh, it's a new territory for me, I guess. I, I had never uh, really torched on a, a roof membrane. So you learn a lot uh, as you're you're doing it, but it's not your conventional roof construction. It's a, it's called the hot roof. So there's no ventilation in the system. It's torched on membrane. So that allows you to have a very much more minimal slope and, and essentially you don't see the slope from the, uh, from the outside of the sauna. So. What's next? Uh, it's a good question. Uh, uh, I always like to have projects kind of next in the lineup, but uh, this one, I'm just finishing this one. So it's, uh, it's, it's kind of like a little break time figuring out what uh, what next will hopefully come through the winter months and uh, we'll start planning accordingly for that one that next project whatever it may be uh, at that time so the the knowledge that I, I get into the the design and the drafting portion of, of the project 100% transfers over to uh, to the solution and the outside of the box thinking that I can bring in front with my client so well, I'm, I'm proud of the end product, right? So I had the vision on paper, I had my paperwork, and, and I never really thought that it would take so much to bring it to life. But when uh, the, when you look at the project complete, like it's a, it's a very nice, peaceful space. So I'm, I'm quite proud of the uh, end product.